I come from a very poor family in a fishing village. And actually, when I was young, I never thought of what to do. At the end, uh, I, after my high school, got a government uh, bursary to enter University of Malaya. And then, only at the time, I started to think, okay, what should I do? So, I thought to myself, maybe I should go to America. So I applied for the Fulbright Scholarship, got it. But at that time, <clears throat> only then I discovered that I was not a citizen. So I couldn't get a passport. So fortunately, the Fulbright Commission at the time uh, helped me and I applied for citizenship. Now, the reason why I was not a citizen was because my father, who was a subject of uh, PERA, didn't include my name in his uh, citizenship. So, after he passed away, I was not a Malaysian citizen, although my sister and uh, my brother were all citizens. So I applied. And the first round, I was interviewed in Pateling Jaya. I failed the interview, of course the interview for Basa. At that time, they asked me, what is the Malay word for convocation? I, I didn't think I, I could have just a phonetic translate that word into Malay, but I said, I don't know. So he said, okay, you, you, you couldn't pass. So later on, I took up a temporary teaching job, waiting to go to America in Pera. And in Pera, I transferred my file there and was interviewed. And the, the interviewer was very, very friendly to me and asked me, you know, what, where were your parents? I said, they, they all mati. So, so he told me, well, the polite term is not to say mati, you know, it's meninga. So after that, I was, I was given my citizenship and then I applied for for the passport, and then I rushed through everything. So I went to America without a visa, the proper visa. I only had a telegram from University of Illinois. Didn't tell me whether I, I need to apply for the accommodation. So I just went there with some well, a little bit of money, I remember I have 100 US dollars. Then uh, off I go to America. And on the way to America, I spent 50, 50 dollars, 50 US dollars. So I landed, I was actually quite sick. But everything turned out quite okay, except for the fact that my, my luggage didn't come with me. So I was in US in the autumn without any clothing for two weeks and without a place to stay. But I, I, I managed to get through everything, so it's quite, <laughs> quite a trip for me. But in, in Illinois, actually before I went there, I have already made up my mind, I want to do theoretical physics. And <clears throat> that was actually inspired in those days, it was uh, 1956, uh, no, 66. I was inspired by Professor Cien Yang and T.D. Lee who won the Nobel Prize. And I thought to myself, well, if these two gentlemen from, from Asia can get the Nobel Prize, maybe I should try that. So I entered theoretical physics. Well, the University of Malaya at that time actually in the physics department was quite, actually quite, uh, quite loose in the sense that it allows uh, staff to do whatever research they want to do. So I was the only one in the country doing theoretical, well not really theoretical physics, but very few theoretical physicists at that time and theoretical elementary particle physics even less. I was probably the only one. I think uh, 
Malaysia and Singapore added together I was the only one and very few from Hong Kong Taiwan maybe a few more but uh, I I have to actually go overseas to Italy to continue my research whenever I can well, I was actually trained when I was in Illinois, trained in the field of uh, Reggie Paul and Reggie Card. But unfortunately, this field died off. So I have to switch field. And in 1980, I had an opportunity to go to Austin, University of Texas in Austin. And at that place, I went to listen to Professor Weiberg, Stephen Weiberg, sat in in his class for supersymmetry. And then I got interested in supersymmetry. I, I should, well, all the way I'm, I have the opinion that uh, <coughs> Malaysian scientists are equally bright compared to uh, to US. Well, when I was in in US, I was top of the class. But the problem is that we do not have the environment, the proper encouragement, and also the weather, the hot weather actually uh, take a toll, and you tend to be more relaxed. And I, I found myself, I was more productive whenever I go to Italy, Trieste, I could, I could write three or four papers in three months. But when I was in University of Malaya, probably less than one paper in a year. So that, that tells uh, the situations quite correctly in a sense that we have to provide proper atmosphere and encouragement for researchers. I find in, in the university, not just University of Malaya, the staff never talk about their research. Whenever they have time, they either talk about politics or stock market, and nothing about their research. And I always encourage the young scientists to do that. And because, you know, you, when you talk to People who are not in your field, maybe they have some bright idea and they see things differently from a different angle. And from there, you suddenly, some bright idea comes from what they say. No, what they say may be totally unrelated to what you are doing. But some of this idea may come from just that. So I think Malaysia needs that. Well, of course, uh, we always uh, hope to produce the local Nobel Prize winners. But I, I think we can, we can do that, provided we give proper encouragement. But we have to allow the scientists to develop whatever they want to do, rather than to tell them, OK, you have to do this type of research or that type of research. And lately, I find that uh, the government's stress on applied application of research. I think that is killing some of their enthusiasm because whenever you think of uh, application, you spend at, at least half of your effort trying to apply what you are doing. I would, prob I would like to think that the proper thing to do is to allow them to do what they, they want to do and then let other people take up the idea whether it's applicable or not. Because application of research is a totally different thing. You, you cannot ask the researchers to do, to do both. Uh, having the idea, the right idea to come with the, the research output and then to apply them. And worse still, because I, I'm sitting on the Malaysian Tourist Science Foundation, vetting through research proposal, and I find that, you know, a lot of this research from the very beginning, they think of application. But when you think of application from the beginning, the level of the research cannot be too high. You must be using the technology that has already been proven, 
known to everybody. Otherwise, you cannot apply. So I think that, that to me, lah, the Malaysia should get themselves out of the, the application uh, strategy.